Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a guide for the nation of Scotland in EU4 1.34. And before this video begins, I would just like to say, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing as it helps out the channel immensely. And now let's jump into Scotland. The nation of Scotland is a nation located in Northern Europe. You're actually just to the north of England, and you also have a starting vassal called the Isles. As Scotland, you can not only expand into both England and Ireland, you can also form the nation of Great Britain as Scotland as well. As Scotland, you actually do start in a precarious situation against the English. However, in this guide, I'm going to show you to not only how to beat the English in the initial war, but also how to absolutely destroy them and form Great Britain yourself if that's something you want to do. One of the first things you want to do as Scotland is see if you can ally France. Sometimes you're able to ally them right off the bat as they will be friendly towards you. However, that is not the case in my game. So if like in my game, you can't ally them, just go ahead and start improving relations with them. Another thing that you want to do is go to your attitude with England and set your attitude as threatened as that'll make it much more likely for France to ally you. The reason we want to ally France is because we want to complete this mission here called the Old Alliance and I'll show you what to do once we ally France and complete this mission. And now it's time to manage your estates where the burghers give out land of commerce, private trade fleets, patronage of the arts, and indebted to the burghers will give out commercial advisory board once we stab up to stab one. For the nobility, give out supremacy over the crown, increase the levies, supremacy of the nobility, and we We'll give out aristocratic counselors once we stab up to stab one. For the clergy, give out religious diplomats, religious state, and once again, we will give this out once we stab up to stab one. And don't forget to summon the diet. Choose whichever agenda is best for you. I'm going to choose this one right here and make sure you seize land. As Scotland, you're not making enough money to hire all three advisors, so just go ahead and hire one from either of these categories. Ideally, you would want to hire a mill advisor so that you can go ahead and get mill tech earlier than England so you can beat them. However, they have a 0, 0, 0 starting ruler, so even if you don't hire a mill advisor, you'll still get it before them since their starting ruler is absolutely terrible. Of course, for mill, you ideally want a morale of armies or discipline. We have a discipline guy here. For a diplo advisor, ideally an improved relations or diplo rep guy. We have an improved relations guy here. And for your admin advisor, ideally a stab cost guy or national tax or really any of these ones here. You don't want to rival anyone yet until you get the French alliance. And once that happens, I'll go ahead and show you what to do. You won't have to worry about the English attacking you on day one as we actually start off guaranteed by France. So don't worry about that. And once you ally the French, you can go ahead and complete this mission called the Old Alliance. It basically gives you claims on a lot of the British Isles here, as you can see. Some claims into England and some claims into Ireland. We're going to use these claims to declare on England very shortly. Now, this next step that I'm about to show you is extremely, extremely important. So I want you to pay very close attention. What you want to go ahead and do is actually dissolve your alliance with France. The reason we originally allied them was again to complete this mission, which gave us claims into Ireland and into England. Now you might be thinking, well, Spears, wouldn't you want that alliance so they can help you against the English? Well, no, the reason you don't want that alliance at least this early in the game is because the surrender of main event is actually about to happen where England declares war on France for a subjugation CB and France is the defender. So what's going to happen is if you stay allied to France, you are going to get called in and England is going to focus all of their troops on you. As remember, the AI always focuses on the weaker nation. So your lands are going to be completely flooded by English troops and get absolutely destroyed while the French just do nothing but mess around down here in the Content. So you don't want that to happen. So what you want to do is ally the French as soon as possible, then dissolve the alliance after you complete this mission called the Old Alliance to get these claims. So now after you complete the mission to get the French alliance, you can go ahead and select some rivals. I'm going to rival Denmark and of course rival England. So after you ally France and complete that mission to get the claims, it's time to fight your first war. Your first war is going to be against someone in Ireland. A lot of times what will happen is the English will warn you like like they did in my game, or they might do that and ally some Irish miners here. Don't worry, you should be able to fight at least one person as you get claims on these three most northern Irish miners. So just look at their alliance networks. As you can see here, Ulster is allied to Clandara, but again, I can't fight Ulster because they border England and I'm warned by England. Same for Tyrone, I can't fight Tyrone. Tyrone is actually allied to the English, which is very convenient. However, I can attack Tyconnell as they're only allied to Thormond and Thormond won't even join. So for your first war, look to see who you can fight here. I'm going to go ahead and attack Connell. 
So for your peace deal with the Irish miners, what you can go ahead and do is either take this land yourself and just core everything in Ireland yourself, or if you want to min-max, then you can go ahead and of course annex this province, then go into your country tab and release them. The reason you want to do that, you typically want to have an Irish vassals. Number one, you will go ahead and save some admin points, not having to core all this stuff yourself. And number two, it will actually minimize some of the unrest as all of these provinces are the same culture, same religion. So if you have a vassal coring all of these provinces here with the same culture and the same religion, you basically won't get any unrest, minus a few separatists every now and then. But it's much less unrest than if you took it yourself as you'd have wrong culture on top of any of the separatism and unrest from taking it from these nations that are already here. So it's up to you. If you'd like to own land yourself, then of course you can just go ahead and fully core Ireland. However, I like having an Irish vassal, so I'm going to go ahead and fully annex them, take all of their money, and then release Iconal in my country tab. And don't forget, once you stab up to stab one or stab two in my case, go ahead and give out the advisor discount privilege. Since I only have a mill advisor, I'm just going to give out aristocratic counselors. However, once you get more advisors, make sure you give out all the other ones to the other estates. And of course, if you wanted an Irish vassal like me, don't forget to release your vassal of whichever one of these ones that you fought here. In my case, I fought Tarconal, so they're my vassal. However, you might have some of these other ones in the north of Ireland as your vassal in your game. Oftentimes, the rivals of England will get this event where you can choose to support one of the houses in the War of the Roses. Always just pick this one. You don't want to give them any money. You don't want to give them any manpower. I mean, they're your rival and they're still going to be your rival regardless of who gets in power. So always choose this one. We will not support rebels. And now it is time to declare your war against England. Ideally, you want to declare the war against England while they're fighting France in the Hundred Years War. However, in my game, France just, I guess, decided not to press for Maine. So if that does happen in your game, you can go ahead and restart. However, that's really not that necessary as you can still win and defeat the English pretty easily even without the surrender of Maine. So if the surrender of Maine doesn't happen in your game, either France decides not to take it or England just gives it back. Then what you can go ahead and do is wait for the War of the Roses to start. When the War of the Roses starts with England, England loses a bunch of manpower. As you can see, they only have 2k manpower. We have 17k. Not only that, but if you wait longer, you will actually have a Miltech advantage over them. We have Miltech 4. They only have Miltech 3 because again, they started out with that horrible 0, 0, 0 guy. So it's ultimately up to you. Ideally, you want to declare on them while they're fighting the French. However, if something weird happens in your game, you can either restart or just wait for the War of the Roses like me. I'm waiting for the War of the Roses and it started not too long. It says that we're outnumbered. However, as you can see here, these Irish nations have no troops like always. And the Portuguese are pretty far away. However, you do need to keep in mind that they will try to land. So just watch out for them. And really the only ones that we're going to have to contend with at the beginning is the English troops. So you either fought England earlier or you're fighting them now. Regardless, go ahead and declare your first war on England for the conquest of Northumberland. And for your peace deal with England, go ahead and take something like this. Of course, take the province of Northumberland. Basically, take everything that you have claims on. So Northumberland, Cumbria, all of this stuff here. Make sure you take these provinces. And you can take a province in Wales if you really want to. However, it's not really necessary. Some people in Scotland, they like to release Wales as a vassal and give this stuff back. However, it's not really necessary as these provinces are not really that high debt. So I'm not going to go ahead and do that. However, you can in your game if you have the war score, of course. However, what you want to do is make sure you take everything that you have claims on, Northumberland, Cumbria, all of these provinces. Take the province of Vale in Ireland that England has, as we don't want them to have a foothold in Ireland, as they might start to expand here. And if you do have some war score left, you can take the province of Man. I don't. It's not really necessary. You can just get it in another war. However, what you should take is, of course, take all the English money. Make sure you take war reps and annul any alliances that they might have in Ireland. So in my case, they're allied with Tyrone. They're also allied to, with off However, I don't have the war score for that, so I'm not going to go ahead and take it. So just make sure your peace seal is all of your claims here, as we need that to unlock the rest of our mission tree here. And make sure you take all the monies. You probably took a lot of loans like I did. And if you want, you can take a province in Wales, although it's not necessary as these provinces aren't that great. 
And once you take these provinces here, you can go ahead and complete the mission called Advance the Frontier. It basically gives you claims on all of these provinces here in England. And after that war, it is time to chill for a little bit, pay off your loans, let our nation recover, get your manpower back, and in about a year, we can go ahead and declare our next war, which will be against one of these Irish miners. After taking these two provinces here, Northumberland and Cumbria, that you have claims on, if you want, you can go ahead and release the vassal of Northumberland. The reason you want to do that is they have wars on these provinces here, these four provinces, so it's quite useful. You don't have to release them. However, if you continue to take these provinces here that belong to you, you will start to incur a little bit of aggressive expansion. So if you're afraid of a coalition or you just don't want to core this stuff yourself, then go ahead and release the nation of Northumberland. And now it's time to declare your next war against one of these Irish miners. You want to focus on the north of Ireland as we needed to complete this part of the mission tree called Into Ireland. So focus on either of these here. I can't attack Tyrone since they were allied to the English and I have a truce with them, so I can only attack Ulster here. So I'm going to go ahead and attack them. See if you can co belligerent some of their people. As you can see here, I can co belligerent Clandar and it would just call someone else in down here who I can't co belligerent because I have a truce with them. So just go ahead and look at these alliance networks. I'm going to go ahead and attack Ulster and co belligerent Clandara. And for the peace deal with the Irish miners, of course, you're going to want to full annex them and take all of their money that goes for every single irish miner that you're going to fight and by this point in the game you should be able to annex your starting vassal of the isles before you annex them make sure that you give out the nobility integration policy to the nobility so that you don't lose diplo wrap and then go ahead and start annexing your vassal of the isles we need to annex them in order to complete our mission tree here called revoke the isle and once you complete the mission to annex your vassal of the isles it only takes one month since we start with a core on them you can go ahead and complete this mission called revoke the isle and while you wait for your truce to be up with england you can go ahead and of course keep expanding in ireland i actually wanted to do it a little bit earlier but i got a regency council so i had to wait but now i can go ahead and attack another irish miner again it doesn't really matter who you attack as long as you try to expand in the north i still can't because again that truce however once that truce is over i'm going to go ahead and attack tyrone but for now i'm going to attack sliga if you have an irish vassal like i do in my game make sure that you set all of Ireland as vital interests so that your vassal in Ireland will start building claims on all this stuff. This is how I have the claim on Sligo. As you can see, it's from my vassal. They fabricated the claim. So I'm going to go ahead and attack Sligo and Cobaladrate Munster. For your first idea group as Scotland, you can take exploration ideas if you really want to, if you like colonizing. However, what you need to keep in mind is you are quite poor as Scotland, so you might struggle to maintain even one colony, let alone more than one colony. However, if you really want to colonize this early, then go ahead and take exploration. Personally, I don't like colonizing this early. So if you don't want to colonize, then ideally for your first idea group, you'd want to take economic. However, if you're like me, you don't have a lot of admin power saved up, then go ahead and choose a mill idea, either quality or offensive. You can choose quantity if you want to. However, keep in mind, we are going to be deving a lot of our manpower so a lot of this stuff here is really not necessary so take either quality or offensive it's really up to you personally i think quality is slightly better since you are a british nation you are going to have quite a big navy so for your first idea group go ahead and take quality one of the things that you should be doing once you take tech four in all of the tech groups go ahead and dev up your capital of Lothian to at least 30 development. We want to do that in order to tick off the age objective here called own a large city. And for the peace deal with the Irish miners, of course, just fully annex them. And if you co belligerent someone, of course, fully annex them as well and take all of the money. For your tier two government reform as Scotland, go ahead and take strength and noble privileges for that wonderful extra manpower. And by this point, I think you get the picture. Basically, just keep declaring on Ireland. Look at the alliance networks of the Irish miners. Keep declaring on them, eating them up, obliterating people that you can. I'm going to declare on Kildara. 
And by this point in the game, after fighting the Irish, your truce should be up with England, so you should be able to declare your second war. If you release the vassal of either Northumberland or Wales, or perhaps both, go ahead and select one of the provinces that they have as a core for the reconquest. I'm going to go ahead and choose Scarborough and call in the allies that you might have. I was able to ally Burgundy in my campaign, so I'm going to go ahead and call them in just to help out. So go ahead and declare your second war against the English. And for your peace deal with England, England in your second war, just go ahead and give back Northumberland everything that they have cores on. So these two provinces. Here. And you can go ahead and take the provinces that you have claims on from your mission tree. Keep in mind that if you declared a reconquest war like I did, it is going to cost Diplo and it's going to be normal aggressive expansion. However, if you're fine paying the Diplo like I am, I really don't care as it's not that much Diplo, only 63 for all of these provinces, then go ahead and take something like this. It's 53 AE. However, keep in mind, no one is really going to care all that much. It's really only going to be people in the British Isles. So a coalition won't fire since we'll be annexing everyone. Also, don't forget to take your little island of man in the peace deal as oftentimes people will forget. So just take something like this. And once you conquer those provinces that you had claims on, you can go ahead and complete this mission called Into England. It basically gives you claims on pretty much the rest of England minus Wales. And now my truce with Tyrone is finally over, so I can go ahead and attack them. By this point in your game, you probably have all of Ireland. You might have one Irish miner left, but by this point, you should have all of Ireland. Nevertheless, it's time to go ahead and finally put the Irish out of their misery. And once you annex the North of Ireland, you can complete this mission called Into Ireland. And once you conquer Ireland, you can go ahead and complete this mission called Conquer Ireland. It gives you morale of armies. This would have been useful earlier in the game with your first war against the English. So just go ahead and take this or wait if you want. Uh, so something very nice happened in my game. I actually got a personal union with Burgundy. So I kind of knew that this would happen. If you're able to ally Burgundy and Royal Mary them, this typically will happen, especially if you're kind of a medium size nation. I'm including this in the guide because it is pretty typical for you to be able to ally Burgundy unless they rival France, but they didn't in my game. This likely won't happen as the Burgundian inheritance is usually gotten by either Austria or France. However, if you can Royal Mary Burgundy and ally them and it doesn't put your alliance with France in jeopardy, then definitely go ahead and do it as you might get lucky like me and get the PU over Burgundy. For your first splendor ability as Scotland, I recommend taking Justified Wars. And don't forget, while you're waiting for your truce to be over with England so you can attack them again, make sure that you are building buildings, build trade buildings in all your centers of trade. As you can see here, we have one in Lothian and one right here in Erisher. So go ahead and build the buildings there. Also build some production buildings in high value trade goods like cloth if you've taken some of the English cloth provinces. And of course, build some manpower buildings to help increase your manpower. And once you get enough trade power in the North Sea, you can go ahead and complete this mission called the North Sea Trade. It just gives you a bit of trade efficiency. For your second idea group as Scotland, if you took an idea group that was not exploration ideas for your first idea, then go ahead and take economic if you took quality for your first idea. And by this point in the game, your nation should look a little bit something like this. You should have eaten up most of England minus maybe parts of Wales and of course, southern parts of England and Cornwall as that will come later in the Scottish mission tree. You should have, of course, either taken all of Ireland for yourself or given it all to a vassal by now. And if you did take a vassal, you should either be annexing your vassal or of course, have already annexed your vassal. Make sure, of course, if you also put out vassals in either Northumberland or in Wales or in both, make sure you start annexing these nations as you probably already gave them back most, if not all of their provinces, especially in the case of Northumberland. In your game, of course, as you continue on, you're going to keep expanding into England and full annex them so you can go ahead and form Great Britain. And if, like me, you got the Burgundian inheritance, of course, you can go ahead and choose to either keep these lands or get rid of them depending on the situation with the Austrians. Of course, after annexing England and Ireland, you want to keep expanding possibly into the Orkney Islands up here as sometimes Scotland will get an event to buy the Orkney Islands. I didn't get that event. I don't know if it happens later. Of course, if you do get that event, then of course say yes and purchase the islands. It's normally not too much money. Trading those islands will unlock some claims on the North Atlantic, basically into Iceland. 
which is quite handy, especially for the colonial reign. Speaking of colonies, as you continue, of course, you want to start colonizing into the New World, but especially into Africa and Asia, as you want to funnel all of this nice African and North American trade into the English Channel, where you will start reigning supreme. For our first two idea groups, we took quality and economic. If you are someone who likes to colonize, then you can go ahead and take exploration for your first idea. If you do not think that you're in the economic position to sustain a colony, or if you are like me and don't really like colonizing, then go ahead and take either quality ideas or economic ideas for your first idea group. Ideally, you want economic ideas so you can start devving early. However, again, it just depends on how many points you have saved up. For your third idea group, then you can go ahead and take exploration and expansion. And for the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, of course, like always, you can take whichever ideas you choose and tailor your game to how it is going. This is what we took for our first three government reform. For tier four, if you plan on staying as a Catholic Scotland, which there are benefits to it, however, you can go Anglican if you so want to. But if you plan on remaining a Catholic Scotland, then of course, go ahead and take Lance for the Church, as you want to be utilizing these papal blessings as much as possible as any Catholic nation should. However, if you are going Anglican or Protestant or any other sect, then you can go ahead and take either Corteo Clerical Privileges for that tech cost, which is really nice, or you can take maintain balance of power it's ultimately up to you for tier five i recommend taking meritocratic recruitment for tier six take general states for tier seven take this one here if you are doing economic ideas for tier eight you can take the social contract if you went anglican or protestant and you're struggling with religious disunity then go ahead and take this one however if you're not struggling with religious unity then just go ahead and take this one right here for tier nine if you're struggling with gov cap then of course take let us samoa however if you're not then just take regional representation. And for tier 10, you should of course take right to petition. This has been a guide for the nation of Scotland in EU4 1.34. Let me know what other nations I should do a guide on in the comments section below. And don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as it helps out more than you think, especially with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.